Welcome back. This time around, continuing on from the Acorn Electron video I did previously, I'm going to have a look at the Electron um, Elk SD128 uh, unit. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's hook into it. So the Elk SD128, as we can see, is available from uh, ramtop-retro.uk, and I actually bought this one from his eBay store. Um, the unit itself has a keyed expansion bus connector uh, so you can plug it into the back of the Electron and not plug it in backwards. Um, it's worth noting that uh, the Electron being as old as it is, the uh, expansion connector may need a bit of a clean um, to make good contact uh, before using this unit. Uh, we've got a joystick connector and I'm not much of a gamer so I won't be doing much with that but um, yeah that emulates a couple of different keyboards, a uh, couple of different joystick types that supports the plus one joystick and it's got a, a key emulation mode that um, maps the the directions on the joystick to um, to key presses. It's got SD card slot at the back and uh, nothing on the other side. A um, couple of uh, little feet <clears throat> just to hold it up off the desk so it doesn't sort of dangle on the weight of the, you know, or the weight doesn't dangle on the uh, expansion connector. Um, the case is a you know, fairly nice 3D printed case and uh, yeah, overall first impressions are uh, pretty good. Um, I have actually had this running already uh, just to test that it did work before I made this video. Um, I'm going to be using this uh, one gig um, SD card for this. Um, I did try a different card. Uh, I don't think I have it here anymore. Um, it was a similar size card but from a different manufacturer and I could not get it to work. It just kept coming up over and over with the card prompt or the, the card you know, error. Um, so I tried this card and it's been working fine ever since. So taking a quick look at the contents of the SD card, we have this beeb.mmb file and that's used by the MMFS that uh, the Elk SD uh, module uses. Uh, it's the same MMFS that I've got in my BBC Model B uh, that uh, allows me to use an SD card in that as well. Um, if we look at the, uh, the website, there is actually a link, uh, or a few links down the bottom, uh, installation instructions, user guide, and a zip file containing a big collection of Electron games. Uh, that is actually a beeb.mmb file, and it's important if you're downloading one of those files that it be software for the Electron because you know, it might be tempting to download a BBC uh, beeb.mmb but the software is not entirely compatible so uh, you probably won't have a whole lot of fun if you try that. Uh, it's also worth just clarifying at this point that I did actually buy this Elk SD128 as I mentioned before on, on eBay. Uh, this is not a, a free demo or a review unit or anything like that. It's one I paid for with my own money. So the first order of business here is going to be to put the uh, SD card in and it goes contact side up. It just slides in like that and we're ready to go. So uh, yeah, we'll plug it into the Electron and see what it does. So our first order of business when it comes to plugging this in is to make sure the Electron is not actually turned on because uh, you do risk uh, damage to the machine and to the uh, Elk SD if you try plugging it in while it's turned on. So you see there, the uh, expansion connector is keyed and the Elk SD is keyed as well. And it obviously goes with the uh, label at the top. So we'll just plug that in. That's plugged in. My uh, lovely RGB cable here. I did the, uh, well made the age old mistake of soldering the cable up before I put the uh, the cover, back shell, whatever you want to call it, on. So, ha, go me. Anyway, we'll plug that in. Right, so we've got our video connected and we can plug the machine in. And we can see we've got an Acorn Electron with 144 kilobytes of memory. Um, it's actually 160 kilobytes. Um, there's obviously the 32 kilobytes of RAM in the Electron itself. And then there's 128 kilobytes of RAM on the uh, Elk SD, which comes to 160. Uh, it says 144 because 
sideways RAM bank 7 gets locked for use by the MMFS, so they take that number out when it comes to displaying it on the screen. And yeah, so 144K Elk SD128 MMFS SPI, and it's got the uh, RH plus one uh, ROM installed as well. So if we type star ROMs, we can see these are the ROMs that we've got. And uh, yeah, so far so good. Okay, so we can see what images we've got on the uh, beeb.mmb file, just for going star dcat. And I've only got the two. Um, one's just got some ROMs on it for testing, the other one's just an empty disk. Um, you can have 511, or it might be 512 uh, virtual disks. Um, and that's what this, this image file I've got on here actually does have all 511. It's just that only two of them have been initialized. So if we go uh, ROM, uh, sorry, yeah, disk zero will have been uh, inserted into the floppy drive by default. And we can see we've got four ROM images, Elkman, View, View Sheet, and WordWise, um, which is supposed to work on this machine. So if we go start SR load, uh, view, and we'll put that in sideways RAM slot six. We might as well load the others while we're here. Into five. Yeah. Word wise, into four. Whoops. And we'll do Elk Man into three. So if we do star ROMs, we can see they're loaded. Now, I think if I do star word to start view, it probably won't work. No, it'll complain. But if I do control break, and I can check and see our ROMs are still there. And now I can do star word and bingo. We're in view and it's been a long time since I've used view. Oh, I wonder why I can't use modes. Maybe it's not working properly on this computer. I don't know whether it's an incompatibility or whether view only works in mode six on the electron. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, on the BBC, you could use like mode zero or mode three, preferably mode three, I think, and it would get you the, uh, the 80 column display, but it doesn't seem to work on the electron. So yeah, I don't know if that's a, an incompatibility or whether that's by design. So, uh, Next on the list, we've got view sheet. Oh, so view sheet does not work. Uh, this could be the BBC version of view sheet though, as opposed to the Electron version. I think the, the view ROM in slot six, I think might be an Electron version because it says view E 1.0. So it might be version one of the Electron version of view, but view sheet, yeah, it might be the BBC version and it uh, has an incompatibility. Uh, it's uh, no fault of the, the Elk SD. It's just, I've got a, uh, probably got a BBC version of that ROM. Uh, word wise, what's the command for that? Double wise? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and word wise is very unhappy as well. So it could well be the same problem there. Oops, star ROMs. And then we've got Elk Man. I know nothing about Elk Man, but it adds a few commands which appear to be related to um, managing sideways ROM sideways RAM. So on the MMFS side, uh, as I said before, the cat, we've got two disks. Say I want to create another disk and I don't care what number it is. I can go star D op N and it's put disk number two, which is the first free one. The first one that's not formatted. Let's put it in drive zero and I can go star form 80 zero go. And away it goes, formatting a nice new disk for me to use. Much quicker than on the real machine too. 
there. So now if I do a star decat, I'll have a disk image too, but it's got no name. So I can go star title scratch. Now if I go star decat, there we have a scratch disk. Um, and you can do things like uh, put uh, your Pling boot files on and set your boot option to, to boot off disks. So like if I do a if I do control break, it'll go back to putting uh, disk zero into um, drive zero. But if I go start D in say one, which is a, just an empty disk, if I just go shift break and shift break's not going to do anything because my boot option is set to zero or off. But if I do a shift break and now I do a star dot, you can see my Tassie disk, disk number one, is actually still mounted in drive zero. So I could have done star D in one on a disk that actually had a boot option and a pling boot file and done a shift break and it would have booted uh, that floppy just fine. Um, you can, of course, put disks in drives other than uh, zero. So I could go star drive, or star DR three, star D in two, and now uh, drive three has my scratch disk and uh, drive zero still has my Tassie disk. So you can do that as well. Um, you, obviously you can have drive zero, one, two, and three. And uh, yeah, so I'll um, copy over that, that big archive that was listed on the, the York SD uh, website. I'll uh, copy that over to the SD card and uh, we'll have a quick look, see what's on that. Before I get started, I should mention you can create your own beeb.mmb file. Uh, the instructions on the website for the Elk SD128 have the details of how to do that. Uh, basically, you use a bit of software called uh, MMB Imager, and that creates your beeb.mmb file with like 511 empty disks. And then you can use another program called Beeb Image, which can create the individual disks. So you can either download the floppy disks and just put them into the MMB file using MMB Imager. Or if you've got individual files, like I had with those, those ROMs, um, you can assemble them into a, an SSD disk image using Beeb Image, and then you can put that SSD image into the MMB file with MMB Imager. So it's, it's fairly straightforward and the instructions for the Elk SD have all the details on how to do that. <coughs> anyway, our, um, our machine's booted up and you can see there's quite a bit of stuff on this card now. Um, this is the archive from the Elk SD website and 233 disks. Again, it will hold 511 or maybe 512 disks, but only 233 are actually initialized in this image. Uh, if we go shift break to boot and maybe we hold shift down. This is fairly slow. It's not the, uh, the best game menu that I've seen, but it gets the, the job done. So, um, trying to find a game that I was playing with earlier. Um, I have a funny feeling I went for frack, but there was actually, yeah, I ended up playing Zalika instead. <laughs> loading. It might look like it's crashed and burned there, but it's actually just the game loading. Seems to use the screen memory while it's uh, loading up, and here we go. And I I actually used to own a tabletop version of this, of Gallagher, the game this is based on. Uh, unfortunately, I no longer do, because that was a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah. 
as you can see, not very good at this. <laughs> I used to be a whole lot better at the actual tabletop game. But the point was, just to show that there's, there's a bunch of games you can get uh, for this machine. Um, hold down shift key. I don't know what funky database stuff they're trying to do here that makes this so slow, but <laughs> it is it is pretty slow to uh, display this menu. So there's games like uh, Arcadians. Um, I did see Elite was on there somewhere. Um, how do we go to the next page? No. Game publisher. Um, no. How do you go to the next page? Space? No. I don't know. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments. Hey, all that. What's it doing? I must have upset it somehow. But yeah, maybe someone can tell me in the comments how you're supposed to navigate. <laughs> from uh, one page to another. So we'll go to E. That doesn't look like E. There's some E's, but yeah, so there's Elite there. Um, I can't imagine this is gonna be a particularly great experience on an Electron. And I've got to admit, I've played Elite like three times in my life. So um, I have no idea what I'm doing. I just wanted to see if it would load. Um, okay, I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing something here. No, I don't know if it's working or it's failed or... Yeah, don't know. Oh, I don't know. I guess I has to, had to press something to get it to go. And apparently I did that. Um. Okay, so A fires. Yeah, I, I don't know how to play it. Maybe you need a joystick. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, there's uh, lots of things you can do there. So that's a quick overview anyway of the, uh, the Orc SD-128. Um, looks to be a handy bit of gear. Um, certainly very convenient to be able to use an SD card for storage, um, particularly on an Electron where most people that had an Electron didn't have a floppy drive. Uh, most people were, certainly me, <laughs> um, and, and I imagine most people were stuck with just cassettes uh, because if you, I guess realistically, if you had the money to buy a floppy drive, yeah, I probably had the money to buy a BBC with a floppy drive. Um, so yeah, I imagine most people were, uh, were stuck with cassettes. A few lucky people had uh, floppy disks, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, this is you know, a nice modern way of um, implementing storage on these machines. So I look forward to using that a little bit more. Um, so that's just a really quick overview. I, I didn't do anything with the joystick port. Uh, that was kind of deliberate. Um, I'm not really a gamer. The joystick port really doesn't interest me that much. Um, I know it emulates a couple of different um, joysticks that were on the market back when the machine was, you know, the current machine. Um, it does support the, uh, you know, the plus one joystick interface style. And it does have the, uh, the keyboard emulation that maps the joystick movements to key presses. Um, how successful that is, I don't know. Uh, depends, I guess, how the games are reading the keyboard. If, they're, if the games are going directly to the hardware to try and read the keyboard, then that emulation probably doesn't work. Uh, but I obviously haven't tried it. But um, yeah, anyway, it looks like a nice piece of gear. And uh, yeah, if you like what you saw, Feel free to uh, 
subscribe if you like and tap that like button and if you've got any comments on you know things that you might like to see me do with it or things that i've, I've done wrong because uh you know we're all learning um then yeah feel free to add them add the comments down in the comment section and uh yeah we'll go from there anyway till next time cheers <laughs>